Then come back and cut, pick up a ribbon. Pull up a ribbon is the toughest one. All right, at the far end. Let's see if she can do it. She rolls the airplane to the inverted position. Right now, she cannot see the ribbon. She drops the nose down closer and closer to the runway. She sees the white line right to the top of the canopy. If she gets too low, she'll drag the vertical stay blade. If she gets too high, she'll cut the top ribbon. Let's see, does she get it? She got the bottom ribbon. It is gone. The top ribbon is still there. And this will be the easy part now. Joanne will come back around and cut that top ribbon. All right, we told you this was the Pepsi Slice, which does the top ribbon. It'll be a double Pepsi Slice. Again, we thank the Pepsi Cola Company. This is the official soft drink. The on the national championship air race, so as to develop an official thirst. Go on down and have yourself an official Pepsi or an official slice. Dollar 50. Back down toward your chest. Those are your perspectives about two and a half to three G's. So the viewers they'll do today, you'll see her for five and six G's. All right, she approaches that top break. Will she get the last many corrections? She goes through, and this, ladies and gentlemen, the Pepsi slice Miss Joanne us through. The ribbon is properly cut. An attempt which was successful. She set those two records for the longest inverted flight distance and time-wise. From the right now, Joanne comes down, lays her signature smoke trail right down on the ground, 10 feet from the runway. Now, the smoke system that we see our performers using might say a word about that a little bit better. It does not burn, it barely smokes, and we know you're concerned about the environment. It is over 95% pollution-free. There's a knife edge pass by Joanna. Look very closely at the of a 10, 300 S. You see the nose high attitude. This is an energy absorbing maneuver, basically. You have to pull the nose up. You're not getting much. Shut up, Buffalo. Right on the right edge, Joanna pulls back. Over the top she goes. This is, believe it or not, a landing maneuver. A loop with a roll on top, a maneuver called an avalanche. If you see it from the side, it describes a heart in the sky, and she wants to tell all the people of Reno, she loves you. She's glad to be here. Now puts the airplane into a side slip coming down toward the runway. Ever so gently, the precious cargo comes down. Down to 10 feet, easing back on the throttle. Five feet, four feet. She wants the kiss. She wants the touchdown. Kiss that runway right at the show center, and she does. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Joanne Osterud. Yeah, you know, Hal, it makes me feel real proud. I, some years ago, I had the privilege of announcing Joanne Osterud's Reno, Nevada, flying his beautiful 51 called Sizzlin' Liz in silver and blue, Ted Country. Number 58 in the all red Yak 11. He's he calls it the Maniac, and he's from San Francisco, California, race number 58, Tom Camp. A nice salute out there to Joanne Osterud as she taxis by at State Center. Number 40, brand new airplane, brand new owner, Alan Wojak in the silk in the Rayleigh's heat race, 3C, six laps. What a beautiful sight those unlimiteds are. No, the twin tail thing, and we've got eight airplanes entered, eight airplanes on the course, so things are looking good. Now they'll pick them out. If you'd like to turn to page 44 in your program, you'll see a nice overlay of the unlimited race course, and it'll help you be able to pick out those pylons a little bit easier. As you know, that they enter on the back side of the course, make that three quarters of a circuit around, and as they come across start finish line, it will be the start of the six lap race. Now right now the airplanes, the leaders are about pylon number five, coming up now to pylon number six on the hill. You see that little white dot on the top of the hill. From there, they come down to the Valley of Speed. As they come off of number six, the fastest part of the course, homeward bound on the way to number seven. About three quarters of the way down on that straight. Then into the short pylon at number eight, where they execute a left turn, and then across the start finish line, heading for number one. Now the number one pylon to number two is a very, very tight pull. You start establishing your amount of bank and then it takes a lot of back pressure on the stick, pulling upwards of five to six Gs, negotiating that turn. And it looks like Tom Camp in the Maniac, the Yak 11 out there with the big R2000 American engine in it. That very, very short way, this began life as...
American engine Yak 11. The way that they look, it's number 58, then, then number 13, uh, which of course is Lefty Gardner, then number 47, which is Bill Clares, and number 39, Skip Holman, a healer, number 99, which is Ted Contrary from Reno, and then number 81, Rob, our biggest ace of the war was Richard Paul. And that's not only unlimited, that includes all three classes of racers, uh, especially the one in faster, because these airplanes are coming down the chute, and the engines are well pulled way back, just to stay slow. And then they put the power to it very hard in the engines, so we needed a faster airplane. They went to the T-33, the red light, and we certainly appreciate what they've done. They left a Gardner out there in the T-38. Yeah, too bad we didn't know about this circuit. He made a circuit around the unlimited course. It would have been nice to have a clock on it, but we weren't advised uh, until too late. I bet it wouldn't be too hard to talk him into doing it later this afternoon. Ah, uh, might not be a possible. Sir, in the black convertible, we now have our two other racers. We are part of the ground racer, Joanne Osteru and Mr. Scott Hemming. In the black convertible, and we run those please for their well-deserved parade lap. And remember, go over to the Kodak booth and talk to them at 12.30. So, roll that car. Joanne Osteru, Scott Hemming, smoke up under the car. The ultimate 300 s the airplane. The pilot, Joanne Osterud, the driver, Scott Hammond. Okay, who is going to win tomorrow? Scott, you going to win tomorrow? Joanne, you going to win tomorrow? Will it be a tie, or is Joanne going to go 3-1? to one? Oh, she says 3-1. to one. Scott's behind her, shaking his head. No way, lady. <laughs> Leo Lautenslager is the American, all the world, look Hoover and Dwayne Cole. From that day forward, Leo set his sights on becoming the best aerobatic pilot in the world. When Leo began his quest, there were no aircraft he considered capable of challenging the Russian and Czechoslovakian monoplanes. One airplane, a Stevens Acro, was under development in California, and it looked promising. It had one element that Leo considered essential. The Sky Champion that he is will give you a wave on takeoff, but there'll be something prior to the wave, and that something should happen right about in here. How about a snap roll on takeoff? Stop in my pitch flight, and then a runner wag off on your left. As we restart now into the machine gun style aerobatics that took Leo to his Olympic gold medal. Off on the left now, you'll see Leo turn around with a five-eighth of a loop turnaround maneuver. And then as he enters the aerobatic area once again, showing you the tremendous rate of roll in the Bud Light 200. This aircraft under perfection each and every year, overhauled and modified each and every winter. In a knife edge flight now, Leo, to gain altitude, will push forward on the stick. This is an outside or negative G half Cuban 8 turnaround. On the descent, after recovering back off in towards Air Show Center, he'll be setting up for a one-half snap roll. The aircraft coming down now. He rolls up to the inverted flight position. Now let's try that snap roll once again. Straight back down. He'll be executing 
unit, two maneuvers combined into one. This will be an inside or barnstormer's loop. Showing you the performance of the Bud Light 200 on the very top of the loop right about it. Here he will execute a snap roll. Completing down the right side of the loop. Now this maneuver, quite often known as the avalanche, is now complete. Now the ability to fly away from the earth for long periods of time is the mark of a championship airplane. Watch this as Leo sets up for a series of horizontal rolls. As he makes his turn around, off on your left. That's a Tomcat. That's a Tomcat. He'll set up into a wingtip pirouette. Come down on the bottom side once again. As he does, he'll be setting up for the very crisp competition style. Four point hesitation roll. Stopping the wall under 90 degrees. There's one. Two, completely upside down. Three, completely into knife edge. And four, completely back to the right side up position. Now, things to get more intense and more interesting. Again, five-eighths of a loop will have it coming back in from our right. He will recover on that 45-degree downline with a turn and a half snap roll. From upside down all the way around to right side up. On the variation of that loop will be the loop with sides. He'll draw the box to the sky as he lays the smoke down on the ground. The bottom of the box is complete. Flying straight up on the left, the left side of the box is complete. Straight and across the top, upside down. The top of the box is now complete. He'll hold that line momentarily, and now the tough part, straight down as the earth comes up to meet him for the fourth and final side of the square loop. How about a big round of applause for your Sky Champion? Our thanks to Maury Distributing, but you haven't seen anything yet. Leo again setting up for a series of rolls. Now watch as he points the nose up. One, two, three, and four of the four-point hesitation roll. Followed by the hammerhead turn, full left rudder, and a little bit of right aileron in here, and then the down snap roll on the D set. There's the staff now setting up from your left with yet another variation of a loop. This is the loop with eight sides for the octagon. Drive the big stop sign in the sky. Let's count the corners as we start out with number one. Straight up is number two. There's number three on a 45 degree upline in relation to the horizon. Four flat and upside down across the top. Five down on the 45. Six straight down. Seven's the last 45. One more pull of the stick and the octagon loop is now complete. Off on you right now. He'll be setting up for the turnaround maneuver once again. As inside the cockpit, things are getting very fatiguing. Just because he is sitting down, it is no easy ride. Watch now as he descends with a two and a half turn staff roll. Down comes the nose. Let's try that right about in here, Leo. One, two, and a half. Recovering to the inverted flight position. And now going in to the negative G, 360 degree push. This known as the Illigois Circle, named after Leo's good friend, Daniel Illigois of the French Connection Aerobatic Team. Now pushing the stick forward, gaining altitude out of that Illigois Circle. Working the aircraft right off the stall position of the wing, but grabbing that air enough to vertically pick up that 45 degree downline and roll the aircraft at the same time. Okay, pulling back on the stick once again. This is the Bud Light 200. This is Sky Champion Leo Lottenslager. And they are brought to you this weekend by Mori Distributing from in and around the Reno area. Okay, Leo coming back in now. Rolls the aircraft into a series of point rolls, recovering to the inverted flight position. As he passes start finish pylon, pushing the stick forward at this point in time in the outside loop. This is the maneuver. The pilots of the motion picture, the great Waldo Pepper, were trying to accomplish without killing themselves. Now a half roll at the very top and completes to the inside or positive G environment. Now Leo's going to turn around and walk on your right. He's going to come back in from your right to your left. In my favorite maneuver, it is called the computer roll. In one pass from your right to your left, Leo will first set up with a double snap roll to the right. He will follow that with a full roll to the left. He will follow that with a half roll to the right. He will follow that with a one-half outside snap roll. He will follow that with a three-quarter roll to the right. He will follow that with a three-quarter outside snap. Impossible, you say? Watch the master. Okay, things get slow and quiet. There's the double snap to the right. Okay, how about a full roll to the left? Good. How about a half outside snap? Roll to the outside. How about a three-quarter roll to the right? Now, how about a three-quarter outside snap back to right side up? That deserves a round of applause. How about the computer roll from Leo, the looper, loud and slagger? Yes, he is tops. Okay, the turnaround off to your right. We'll have Leo coming back in. He'll be looking for almost 200 miles per hour. 
as he gets that speed. He'll be pulling the stick back in Airshow Center right at the start-finish pylon. As he establishes the vertical, he will start to roll the aircraft. From 200 miles an hour, the speed dissipates to 150, to 100, to 50, to 40, to 20, to 30, to 10, and then zero. Shifting into reverse now, backing up and still torquing the aircraft, still backing up as a line going. Engine doesn't miss a lick. Straight back down once again and recovering out of the torque roll. Okay, Leo, turning around off to your right again, we'll be setting up for a maneuver that was invented by a Hollywood stunt pilot way back in the 1920s. Maneuver was invented by Frank Clark. It is known as the Frank Clark roll or the Cobra roll. As Leo comes in, he'll be drawing out a cobra snake in the sky, about ready to strike. He will first pull back on the stick. Now push forward. Now pull back. Now push forward. Now let's try a multiple turn snap right about in here. As the cobra strikes, one, two, three, and four all the way around. And a big round of applause for Leo and the cobra roll. And now, starting to be short on breath, off on your left, he sets up for the vertical roll. He'll cap it off and turn around again with that classic turnaround maneuver known as the hammerhead or the vertical reversement. Now showing you the great performance of the Bud Light 200. Built and designed by Leo Lawrence. Like he's going to execute a maneuver that just a few short years ago, especially here with the density altitude in Reno, was not thought possible. It'll be a looping maneuver. He'll snap roll the aircraft on the top of the loop and actually fly the top of the loop like this in knife edge flight. And that is performance and that is aerodynamics. A quarter roll to the left and he completes that big loop with a snap on top. Again, our thanks to the great people who bring you all of this great action. And the folks bringing you Leo Lautenschlager are responsible for delivering the Anheuser-Busch products in and around this area, year-round, Mori Distributing. It is Leo Lautenschlager and the Bud Light. Okay, now another maneuver showing you the tremendous performance built into this airplane will be a sectional hammerhead turn. Leo pulls to the vertical, looks out to left and right side at the horizon. Now watch this, he'll kick in the rudder once as he climbs. He'll hold it there. Now try it one more time, try it a third time, try it the last and fourth time, and the sectional hammerhead is now complete. Okay, maneuvering round off to your left once again. He'll be coming back in. And with the tremendous problems known as density altitude, it takes a lot of the muscle out of any airplane that you fly being this high above sea level. Leo's going to be coming back in and draw what's known as a vertical S with a smoke system. He'll do it, however, the hard way from the ground up. Not only great performance, but also great knowledge of the aircraft as he draws the bottom of the S. Smoke on, please. Now pushes forward on the stick. Still flying, still hanging on to a stall, pushing the nose forward. Now he goes into zero G. The wings hang on and the vertical S is now complete. Watch the wingtips now as he fires off those wingtip canisters. And again we go to the cockpit of the Bud Light 200 as Leo dedicates his next maneuver. Okay, from the cockpit to Bob Hoover. Bob Hoover, this lump Shabak is for you. All eyes and all cameras on Leo. The lump Shabak, Czechoslovakian slang for the equivalent of drinking too much plum brandy. This is what happens. You tumble out of control and get tipsy. And Mr. Bob Hoover, that lump Shabak was for you. again to the American flag out in front of us and the start finish checker pylon. As Leo sets up for a series of snap roll maneuvers, he will come down and take a look at his crew out on the runway. Things look good. He will attempt to fly between the poles held by those crew members. The 
bowls are only about a foot and a half wider than the wingspan of the Bud Light 200. As he turns around off to the right now, he has lost sight of those bowls, relying only on timing and the tremendous amount of practice that it takes to be this good. Remember, it was here at Reno, as a spectator, that Leo made his commitment and his quest became true. Watch this now as he attempts to break the ribbon. Done the hard way in the inverted flight position as down comes the rudder on the runway. Lining up those last few corrections, lower and lower does the rudder come down on the runway. He's got it lined up and he breaks it clean. In the knife edge flight again and recovers very nicely right about in here. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one. He is Leo Laudenslager. He is a sky champion and he deserves your applause. and I can tell by that wave he is in a very exuberant mood right now. Now watch this. This is fun. Leo is set up for the landing. Although he is flying high and away from the runway, he will land out of this maneuver. Now watch carefully. This is the one that drives the tower operators to jump right out of the window. Still on final approach into a series of rolls into the inverted flight position, into knife edge flight. Still on final approach, going about 150. Levels the wings, side slip maneuver. Right rudder, left aileron, and he likes to use the area down on the left that nobody else uses. And again, a beautiful, gentle, perfect three-point landing. That is a looper. He'll be back up here soon with the canopy open and the engine shut down. Our thanks again to Maury Distributing. Bud Light Jet, this weekend, flown at a location somewhere by one of two individuals that alternate with Leo, two X Blue Angels, Bill Eck and Bill Berner Beardsley. Well, we're going to bring in the Sky Champion. Remember, he represented the United States of America up against the best aerobatic pilots in the world, especially those that were subsidized by the former Soviet Union with unlimited budgets and the best technology to build aircraft that were winners. Look at the lines on this Bud Light 200. He's going to back it up. There you have the message, Bud Light. The prop will stop. We will open up the canopy momentarily. And remembering that he made his vow here at age 19 and fill that vow. Ladies and gentlemen, truly the American all the world looks up to. A big Reno round of applause for Leo Lavenslager and the Bud Light 200. Now, at this point in time, I will admit to you that Lee is strapped in. If he wasn't, right about in here, he would fall away from the aircraft. You open up the palm of your hand, you put in a coin or an apple, you turn your hand upside down, what happens? It falls to the ground. That would happen to Lee right here if he didn't have that waist belt tied around him. He would fall free of the aircraft. But this will be the only time during these extended inverted flight maneuvers that Lee is strapped in, and again, right now it is for safety, and all the while, you are looking at that propeller turning just a few inches above you. Jim Franklin has to fly a completely different act in this airplane than he would if he was solo. Again, Lee is not look like a big target out there, but get this, just the frontal area of his frame doubles the drag of this aircraft. Okay, so you have a lot of disadvantages, density, altitude, with the field elevation being almost 5,000 feet, the drag of a wing rider. Jimmy Franklin's skill has to come into play here. And again, he is not taking a free ride either. He has to concentrate to make sure that he has the entry speed to get the maneuver accomplished. Okay, he's working right off the deck. Jimmy, once again, they'll roll the airplane upside down. There's the message, Miss Miller, genuine draft. The official beer of our 30th towards the fuselage and occupies a position on the top of the top wing.
He does. I'll tell you what, he can't hear your applause, but Lee stood tall for us. Would you stand up? Would you stand tall for Lee for me for a moment? Would everybody get up on their feet, do a little stretch? Wave your hats, if you will. Wave your programs with everybody standing. And those great stars, unable to hear your applause, they will absolutely love your enthusiasm. And they have accepted the challenge of flying under these very difficult conditions. And Race 2A. And we have got the airplanes down on the track now at about 250 miles an hour. The noisiest class we've got here in Reno. It's number 27, Miss TNT. That's Eddie Van Foss. And a right up back of them is that familiar blue airplane with a 75 on the side of an Al Goss. Ralph Twombly and a very 57, Jim's good. And number five is the airplane of Jerry McDonald. Now let's pick them up down there on the back stretch. It's still the yellow master himself. I'll tell you what, this guy...
And Bob asked me if I would read this statement that he has prepared to provide this safety coverage. And Bob wants to thank Jim and Carol Silver has been most kind to allow Lee and Bob to use their beautiful airplane this weekend. And now, Al, back to you for the folks in the no Helicopter! Yes, Andy, that stands for no tail rotor. That's what you're seeing out there, ladies and gentlemen. A helicopter with no tail rotor, and now I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna do things with a helicopter you never thought could be done, and there's one right now. You think this is a flying circus? This is sponsored by the flying people now at Circus Circus. There's a high rate pitch now, and now, this helicopter will set up for a high speed pass, which for him is only 152 miles per hour. The helicopter flown by Rich Lee, who was the chief pilot of the Light Helicopter Flight Test Division for McDonald Douglas Helicopter Systems. Alright, coming down now for 152 miles an hour, up to the left, to the right. And with a watch, this is helicopter look good. And do another thing that you've never seen done unless you've seen the Nodar before. Hammerhead turnaround. Now we're so used to seeing our conventional airplanes do it with left rudder. Watch now as this one will be executed to the right. That's because we're taking advantage of the torque of the engine in a conventional airplane, and in this place we're taking advantage of the torque of the rotor. Now, have you ever seen a helicopter loop? If you haven't seen a nose, you haven't seen a loop. Let's watch. You are about to see what they said just a few years ago. Lazy 8 maneuvers. A table 
picture of it in days. I'll try to send it to you. conceived during a time when air racing was advancing at breakneck speed. It was designed to compete in the Bendix Trophy Race. Flown by Lee Gelbeck, it was raced under license number November Romeo 2101, racing number seven. The replica owned and flown right now, absolutely a blind airplane. Nothing but a very large engine in front of great pilots like Lowell Bales, who would lose his life in the GP. Russ Boardman, of research, because you see the after they got out of racing because they didn't want any more of their friends and associates killed. So it's very tough because over the years, the pilot said, don't let that thing bite you. Never try to do aerobatics in a GB. It will snap and put you into the earth. But look at Delmar Benjamin. Knife edge flight. And as Del likes to say, you can knife edge this airplane from one side of the state to the other. This was learned from the model aircraft people, by the way. A racing pilot got in this configuration. They that. flew this airplane, this difficult aircraft, off that 3,000 foot screen, went up with a photo ship, and was very the first flight. <laughs> 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 in an airplane that very few people can tell you realistic yeah. things about, <laughs> he rolled the aircraft upside down and in formation with the camera ship. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Each week, at each show site, Dell learns a little bit, makes a 120 degree turn, sometimes pulling six, seven, and eight Gs. Well, quite often the airplane would snap roll and snap roll into the ground with the pilots. Every great pilot and airplane were lost in just that fashion. Behind our announcer stand, in the colors of the GB, was back in those days, and it brings back nostalgia to those people who were viewers during the golden age of air racing, 1929 to 1939. And now on the landing, the first landing on this airplane taught Dell a very important lesson. A lot of GB pilots lost it on the landing because they tried a three-point landing. What would happen is the left wing would dig into the ground it would pivot the aircraft, then up to the nose and the nose bowl, and then the opposite wing, destroying the airplane and damaging the pilot. That almost happened to Dell on his first landing with this hot airplane at a 3,000-foot strip. He tried to put it down three-point, 
with the main gear and the tail wheel at the same time. The left wing tried to dig into the earth only by a quick reaction of pushing the stick forward again, lifting the tail, and getting the airfoil attached over the wings kept the airplane from being destroyed. And Dell said, never, ever, ever will I ever tail wheel or three-point land the airplane again. Every landing will be a wheel landing. Over the fence at 120, touching down between 100 and 90, and about 75 or 80, the tail then comes down by itself, and the airplane will not bite you then. If you look back and see how far back Delmar is in his cockpit, that was to offset the very heavy weight of that big round engine. It kept the CG in line. He is way back there by the rudder post. There's a door on our side, and the seven, the number seven, is on our door. That's how you get in, and that's how you get out. It took the great Delmar Benjamin and his courage and vision to bring the big engine GBs back into the air. Never, ever did we think it would happen. It did, and never did we think we would see aerobatics in the GB. That's happened as well. This great airplane, in only its second exhibition season, 28 different cities last year, 28 different cities this year, with a waiting list for the next two years. And again, you can support Delmar Benjamin. My first thank you. Well, the Raven. I'm going to raise the ground. I'm going for 30, 30 V-Stack ready for the count, you bet. There we go. Okay. A one mile long inverted flat spin, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Wayne, I see you're into the spin. And uh, both hands and feet busy. Well, my left foot's not doing a thing, actually. My right foot's doing all the work. I have that right to the middle. Are you trying to tell me you're uncomfortable? I'm trying to tell you I'm miserable right now. <laughs> All right, we got old Hal the Man down here counting them off for you. Okay. I'd like to mention, my good friend, the U.S. propeller. And the first last spin is another one of those maneuvers that's tough on the stop. And I uh, really appreciate having a backup team like the boys at U.S. propeller. I'll tell you, the stock's in there. Okay, well, Wayne, you know, we want to make mention, too, that the First Interstate Bank of Reno was very happy to present you here for the second year in a row. Well, it's certainly a pleasure working with Frank Kittle and all the crew there. I've had enough of this, Danny. I think it's about enough. I, I didn't want to keep talking to you. Uh, that's how you spell it, really. 34? Uh, Hal said you did 34 in about six tenths. Well, that sounds like it ought to be good for some hugs down in Section 3, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, this next maneuver that you've got, this is the Wayne Hanley original. How'd that come about? Well, I thought it was possible, and I just kept playing with it until I found it. Let's see how we go for two couples here today. Ice and you yelled, hoo <laughs> That's great. Now, how about give me that, what you call the spiraling tower? You see why I did that early into a little bit high? Like this whole thing at the end. A little silhouette here. Well, I know when you're on circuit that uh, you've got your own sponsors when you're in the air show circuit. U.S. Propeller, boy, I'll tell you what, as a proven testimony, you put that prop through a lot of hard knocks. Here comes the chiropractor. We're going to give our office into it today. Oh, the chiropractor, you mean the neck stretcher. <laughs> Wayne Hanley has got the longest neck on the air show circuit. <laughs> Here we go for the snap roll. In 
side snap roll. Two, three.
All right, hammerhead turn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get your cameras ready because Wayne is going to do the incredible loop around the wire. Now, I don't think I need to tell you that when he gets inverted, the inverted position at the apex of the loop, he has to know exactly where he is. Okay, Wayne, we're all ready for the loop around the wire. Yes, sir. Here we go. Now, right about here, going up, he must gauge his position absolutely perfect because once the nose drops down to right there, he is committed. trees before you get into the field, but they're uh, too close together to uh, for the wings to go through. Yeah, and the unlimited, and you heard. So give us that famous Wayne Hanley approach to landing. The incredible touchdown four point. <laughs> Watch this, folks. This is Wayne's revenge on all of those telephone wires through his crop dusting career that have been nipping at his ag plane. Flying Striga, Bill Tiger to Stephanie from Bakersfield, California. Right next to him in the big Hawker Sea Fury with the number, race number eight on him. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hanley is not done. I didn't know he was going to be coming back this way. You have seen one of the most expert pilots in aerobatics today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
on to this and the F-16s. Mm. F-5 is too slow.
Hulk smashers for nothing. <laughs> yeah. At then 5,000 feet at 200 knots, you're running into a lot of them. You bet this a new one. Dakota, they have pipe right here. Huh? Oh yeah, that's uh, that there is for this here. This is for where we record all the info, everything that we check landing wise. We set and goes on a piece of paper here, and then we take that and it's supposed to be within limit. Two models. Is it? Mm -hmm. What model? You have models? Uh, yeah, this is C-130E. Right there in the back of the
Good job.